the thoughts just haunted me daily. You know, she, <laughs> she lived rent free in my head, man. All right, guys, welcome to another episode of the Type and Lifting Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. I have a returning guest. Um, actually, we haven't talked in probably like two years, roughly. Um, a couple of years. Yeah, so um, he's the owner of the Emom Company, and if you see him working out in his driveway, you know who the alpha guy is in the neighborhood, Brandon Luckett. <laughs> Thank you for having me, Tom. Appreciate hey, it. Hey, hey. So um, there was one Instagram video. I, I wish I I wish I pulled it up, but uh, it's you doing back squats or something like that, or like front front racks with like no shirt on, like in the driveway. And I'm like, and I wrote like alpha alpha dad, like al yeah, alpha yeah, yeah. guy. So, and I'm like, dude, like you, you were looking absolutely like yoked. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm a bit heavier dude. than I used to be. Um, yeah, but I'm, is, is it, is it kind of good for you though? It's been good. It's been good. It definitely, I mean, the, the, I'm th I think like the biggest shortcoming for me in terms of competing has always been like the strength side of things. Mm -hmm. And, uh, over the past few months I've added on a few pounds, which is probably needed. But I mean, whenever I wasn't competing, I was like, I'll just, I didn't care that much. I didn't eat that much because I was, you know, working quite a bit. So I like I'd shed the weight. But like, dude, I'd say probably since you and I talked the first time, I've put on at least 13 pounds. Damn. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. I think I put on like about 10, 10 or 12 pounds too. So <laughs> all in your biceps, yeah. so I can see. Can yeah, it. right. No, no, dude. <laughs> you know, I, since I, I know I know you used to uh, be part of Misfits for a while for yes, a while. Sir. So I, I still follow them and I'm telling you, like, I'm, I'm not saying that your program's crap or anything like that, but I'm just saying like the misfit, like has helped me. Like I, my lifts have gone absolutely through the roof. Yeah. So yeah, especially I mean, misfit being, was great. I mean, they were, they're the OGs, man. And I followed them for four or five years, probably. Yeah. So nothing but good things to say about them. You know? Yeah. I still, yeah, I, and all it, the coaches over there, I still love them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, they're great. And there's like so easy to talk to too, which is good. Oh, yeah, so for sure. Uh, but yeah, as a 44 year old man, I'm like, I'm squat cleaning 325 snatching 245 and like in a plan, I'm, you know, me being at six, six too. So that doesn't really You're help me tall. out. Yeah. Oh my gosh. The yeah. camera definitely takes away like a foot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, yeah. And, 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 all, and it's, it's funny because like, you'll see videos of me and they're like pretty up close. But like when you actually see like me standing next to somebody, yeah. it's like night and day. They're like, Holy smokes. You're tall. I had no clue. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I don't really don't go any, any, any to any competitions or anything like that. So, I mean, I would like to, but it's like, you have to just start showing up looking like a basketball player. Yeah. True. <laughs> Yeah, true, true. I, I make I make Matt DeLugos look silly at the That's height amazing. wise. So I got like yeah. three inches on him. That's awesome. Yeah, but um, the last time we talked, um, you were you were contemplating on like hanging it up, not hanging it up, but like you know moving on to your you know your job with your dad and stuff like that. And and I know in the um previous podcast you did today with Savan, I, I was I was hoping I got you before before him but i didn't i was like shit but anyway um <laughs> you did jujitsu for a little while and then um and then you joined a team so was yeah. jujitsu like not lighting the fire for you to to go back to and that's the reason why you went to back back to crossfit no so alexis johnson a very good friend of mine uh she's she i got kind of credit with her with like kind of pushing me to the next level of competing um because i met her while i was doing a summer internship in houston in like 2016 and mm -hmm. uh just like being around her and watching her like push herself i was like oh dude there's a whole nother level that like i haven't even touched and so she's been my friend for eight years now or something like that but um in 20 in 2020 the year of covid she had texted me in like september and was like hey start training we're going to do a team this year I was like, okay, fine. Like, pulled me out of retirement. <laughs> that was the first time I came out of retirement. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. compete in 2019. So 2020, we did team. We, uh, you know, we went down and did a sanctional in Buenos Aires and qualified for the CrossFit Games. And then COVID happened. And so, mm -hmm. like, teams weren't going to be a thing. They were doing, they did, like, the at-home games that year, which I got to do as an individual. So I consider that, like, my second time qualifying for the CrossFit Games as an individual. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but 
we didn't get to compete together, Alexis and I on team. So uh, she did team a few more times throughout the the years um, with like some really awesome team teammates and like had a good time doing it. But she got to a point where she's like, "All right, this is going to be the last year, like for good. I'm I'm done after this." And uh, she texts me, she's like, "Hey," <laughs> and I and this is again, I had like decided to retire, like I didn't compete yeah, yeah. in 2022. So 2023 season comes around. She's like, "Hey, it's my last year." It would be really cool if we could do a team together um, so that like I can compete with you before I'm done. Mm-hmm. And I was, I was like, okay, but I'm not helping you put the team together. I'm not changing the way I train. Um, it's like for funsies, like, but let's do it. So we ended up putting together an awesome team, had a great time in like the 2023 season. Um, and we got to compete together at the CrossFit Games. Yeah, and you so, you guys, I think you guys, didn't you guys like place like fifth or something like that? We, we were like 11th. So we did, 11th, yeah. Okay. We, Alexis was extremely sick the entire weekend of the CrossFit Games, which mm-hmm. was tough um, for her. You know, that's like, that's her last time at the CrossFit Games. That's got to be like tough where like, I mean, she, she pretty, she either had flu or COVID. We don't know which one it was. We didn't say, <laughs> we didn't talk about it. Um, yeah. We'd pretended like she wasn't sick, but like I remember the first event, we were we were doing synchronized overhead squats facing each other, and dude, her eyes were like bulging out of her head. She was pale, and I was like, "This is gonna be a rough weekend, dude." <laughs> like it was bad. Yeah, but yeah, so that's how I got pulled out of retirement. That's why I stopped doing jujitsu um, because I decided to compete, and like I couldn't do jujitsu uh, without trying to grapple like a wrestler and Mm -hmm. like like you know move quickly and like like push a pace or whatever and i was dude i i thoroughly loved it but every week my neck my back my my fingers and toes like my i'm pretty sure i broke my hand once i couldn't shake a hand for a few months um (laughs) like dude it it was awesome but like it was breaking me at the same time yeah yeah. like like, i need to like if i'm gonna compete i can't do this too uh, mm-hmm. So I, I do, I would love to go back and, and get back into that grappling because uh, I, I certainly miss it, but it doesn't jive well with trying to keep your body intact. Yeah. And, and that, and like that kind of works well with your wrestling background too. So yes. Yeah. I, so it, it brought back I, a lot of those, like those yeah. fires from like wrestling, you know? Yeah. 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 I, so I've never wrestled or done jujitsu. So I'm just like, I have a feeling if I go up against like a smaller individual, I'm going to get like thrown, like thrown around or I'm going to toss other people around because I have like no idea what I'm doing. It's uh, probably <laughs> yeah, like they'll, they'll probably throw you right into the fire when you like go in there. Yeah. But, yeah. They'll be like, Oh, Hey, you're big and strong. Why don't you come, c- come on and join the circle, get in the circle. Let me show you how I can use your levers against you. Yep. And uh, you're like, I think my favorite term for like jujitsu is, I like it whenever people show me how to fold my clothes while I'm still in them, you know, and that's pretty much what it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm not flexible either. So that I get definitely screwed. So <laughs> yeah. But, um, with the, with a lot of people that don't know who Alexis Johnson is, she's a, a former misfit ath- athlete yeah. and she, I, like you said before, she goes hard, mm-hmm. like hard, like, like you said, you've seen like one level of her and like, it's, it's like almost double that. So like yeah. she, she loves, she loves going into that pain cave like a lot. And so how was Whenever her? Whenever I met her, her, she would go into asthma attacks in the middle of Metcons. Like she has asthma. I was like, dude, you're a psycho. Like, is, is she trying to be awesome. like FDR? Is she trying to be like I Franklin don't... Delano Roosevelt? Like doing all those hikes and like trying to, cause he had Man, asthma I too. She was, she was so fit. Like, and she used to yell at me. Like, I, I think she hated me for a little while because I was so young and dumb and like a 20 year old kid. And yeah, she, she taught me a lot that like, just about how to like push yourself to, to a new level. And that was cool. Yeah. And, and what, like, what were some of the things that she said to how to, that makes you better to push yourself other than, other than you getting yelled and, at? Yeah. I, one of the, the, there were a few things. I've gotten yelled at by her for for chalking in the middle of a workout. She's like, "You don't need chalk." Like, <laughs> like, like legit yelling at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I made the mistake of talking in the middle of a metcon to oh, her. No, you never do that. Never do that. And we were both working out next to each other, 
That's crazy. And she like looks at me like with like this fire in her eyes. And she's like, if you have enough oxygen to talk right now, you are not going hard enough. And I was like, oh, duly noted. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> and then there was a, there's another moment. We were both on assault bikes and I'm like, I'm like a bigger guy. I was like certainly bigger than a like little bitty Alexis. And uh, we were, the workout started with like a, a 21 and a 16 calorie bike, 21 for the guys, 16 for the girls. And, um, like, obviously we're supposed to, like, we should get off at the same time if, yeah. like, if I pushed appropriately hard, <laughs> but dude, I shit you not. I got off at, like, I got to 15 calories and she hopped off and I was like, oh no, I'm so bad at this sport. <laughs> like, dude, she was like ran circles around me that entire summer, but it was awesome. Yeah. So was, was there any workouts that you actually did beat her at one point? There was finally, there was a workout, I think. And I, I don't even know if it was that summer. I think it was because I I did that internship that summer in Houston. I went back to Louisiana, finished my last year of undergrad, and then went to graduate school back in Houston. So I don't think it was until I like went home for a full year, trained, and then went back. And like I finally got a W on her some, at some point that year. Yeah, yeah. So did you have like a poster on the wall of her just like screaming, saying like, I got to get better. Like, I'm going to get better than you. I'm going to get better than you. The thoughts just haunted me daily. You know, she, <laughs> she lived rent free in my head, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And it, it's, it's crazy to see like how other people manage like pushing themselves through workouts because, you know, the typical gym goer doesn't go into that pain cave a lot, but like a lot yeah. of you guys go in almost like on a daily basis. Yeah. I wait, I have a question for you. Can you hear these two talking? Uh a little bit, but it's not that bad. Hey guys, be quiet. Y'all are ruining the show, bro. <laughs> um <laughs> so can can you repeat your question? Yeah, so um obviously with you know her going to the pain cave and like you going to the pave cave, like a lot of people yeah. that are like a regular gym goer don't go into that kind of pain cave, but you guys go into it every single day, pretty much. Yeah. In some form or fashion. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think at, at this point, like I think in the early days of competing, it was like, it was like push yourself to the, like the absolute limit of your capability in every workout every day, you know, the fire breathing error. Like if you're, if you kind of remember yeah, like yeah. Your, your fire yeah. breathers, I think at this point people are getting a little more like, um, connected to training a little bit more and like it's smart with it. And like, we know that like we can't push ourselves to that limit every single day mm -hmm. um, or you'll get like burnout, you'll get adrenal fatigue. Um, and so like, and there's definitely like cycles like throughout this, the season as a whole, yeah. but there's still like the mental grind of it. E even if you're not like, you know, pushing yourself past threshold threshold and getting into like that third, fourth gear, like there's still the mental aspect of it of like, every single day i've got to i've got to like check these things off the box and i have to do them intently and like it's going to be a grind and so like even in, in that aspect like there's there's going to be that like every single day even though it's not let me see how exactly how fast i can like complete this task you know yeah yeah now, now how how do you get into that like paint like like let's just say you have a workout that's like you know I don't know, like the last last regional or something like that when you were like the fifth fifth person to get into the games. I, I forget what year it was, but uh, yeah. but um, but like you were like you probably were thinking in your head. Well, I'm just guessing, but you know, you were saying, listen, I gotta like full throttle this workout. And so, how do you get your mindset into knowing that, like, listen, you're gonna go dark for a little bit and just like and just go 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 because I know you know a lot of people don't can't get into that mindset so how, how do you get into that mindset um man i think it's part of the competitive nature because i mean everyone knows that like you put someone next to you like if you train in your garage by yourself and do a metcon and then go to the gym and do it with the class like more often than not you're probably going to push yourself much harder whenever you've got like other rabbits to chase or like you know prize yeah. on the line or like ego gets involved and things like that um and so I, th I think it's for competitors. It is the daily thought of like, I've got to, I've got to get myself to that place so that I am aware of how it feels. And I'm like, I know that my body can body and mind can function in that like darkness. 
mm-hmm. so that whenever like I do get to the floor, I'm not I'm not incapable of like touching that place. And so it's just like it's just it's constant and frequent exposure to that feeling. And like it's it's hard to get to the pain of like competition in training. Like rarely do you go to that darkness, but it's like you get close to it. Like you make things hurt really bad so that whenever you like get to competition, like you know that you can get there and like you know like you're capable of like this pain tolerance and, and like yeah. And I think that's something that's like I've gotten a little bit a little bit better at this year. Um mostly from just doing 30 minute pieces is like you don't have to go you don't have to like you know red line in the first five minutes if it's a 30 minute piece because like the last 10 minutes you're redlined so like Mm -hmm. you don't get a choice like you should get redlined regardless (laughs) you know yeah yeah exactly yeah (laughs) that's awesome yeah um oh i was gonna ask so shoot so oh yeah have you ever um like when you do a hard workout do you ever like flail down on the ground and like like a dog like you know just like a dead person pretty much or you do that like a good amount of the times no not a good amount of the times um it's usually like a sit down on the haunches and like find Mm -hmm. a fan or uh you know just watch the sweat drip onto the floor but every now and then like there's a your your feet touch the floor and like you just collapse like every now and then there's one of those um like event two from quarterfinals the wall ball and burpee box jump over Mm -hmm. um my feet touch the floor and then my shoulders shortly thereafter also touch the floor you know (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I, th- I think of my CrossFit, you know, all all the years I've done CrossFit, I think I've laid on the floor like four times because yeah. I I strictly remember um Sherb from Misfit Athletics. He's like, you don't lay down like a dead dog. Just you know, you stand up or sit down or do something like that. And so I was yeah. like, okay. I and then like I have in that mindset pretty much, just like okay, I need to, you know, n- just sit down or like you know not not flail on the ground and like look just like a dead dog pretty much yeah i've had the dead dog the dead dog looks a few times but um not not as frequently as you might expect not as frequently as like i don't know if you remember travis williams yep every workout dude every single workout that dude was immediately after the last rep and i think that's just he was one of those guys that like it was fifth gear or no gear at all like if it was paced out, he didn't want to do it. He he like he like he wouldn't do an on the minute style workout. He wouldn't do a workout at eighty percent. He didn't like long workouts because he couldn't redline immediately in them. And so like <laughs> every workout he did, it was last rep on the ground. You know. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've he's. I think I've heard um, heard the guys from Misfit say like he goes like. 100 percent like immediately right off like the first couple seconds and he just like he, i think the way he way when he was training and like doing competitions he would try to gauge on like you know can he hold that pace for the whole time so everyone has to catch up pretty much yeah he would bait people out all the time and he was just like he was so hard-headed like he would be the guy who could hold it you know mm-hmm. yeah yeah and his story is interesting he was a really heavy set dude before he started Big crossfitting yeah. yeah so yeah and did you learn anything from him at all or oh my gosh yeah other other than like redlining and stuff yeah how to go full dummy he was he was he was actually the the first person probably outside of like my father um who who truly believed that i could qualify for the crossfit games like and that year was like 2018 because i mean he lived in houston and was training with alexis and uh that year 2018 he's like you're going to the games you're going to the games like he repeated it like every time i saw him he's like you're going to the games so like he truly believed it and like he was the first person outside of you know like i said my father who like actually believed that i was capable and so yeah, was, yeah he's a good friend so when, when he was saying that do we you're like nah you're just kidding like not like were you just like being like you're just you're kid, kidding around stop it or you didn't did you believe it at all it's more of a like i don't know maybe <laughs> i don't know <laughs> like yeah it's possible, you know, and even like, I mean, that's still the same mindset I have is like, it's possible. I'm capable. Um, cause like, if you don't believe you're capable, you like, right. Like that's not the mindset you go in with, but you also don't go in with like the expectation or like the mindset of like, I'm going to qualify. Um, because there's so many uncontrollables out there that like to just be like, yeah, I'm going to, and just have like that assuredness to me is a dangerous mindset because I don't know. I, I, would, I would be afraid to have that mindset because there's like there's so many things I can't control and uh I don't want to get to like a 
I, I would like to, I mean, maybe like a cocky mindset of like, no matter what, I'm going to qualify. And like, mm-hmm. I don't know if that's a fair thing for me to to say. Yeah, and I don't, I don't see you as a cocky guy at all. I, I try not to be. <laughs> yeah, and then and then what, it, once you like say like I'm going to the games or I'm going to, you know, semifinals or whatever like that, and you don't get in. You know, then 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 there's that fear that comes in, and you you've expressed that in the Savant podcast about mm-hmm. you being fear of of coming back and failure so how how did you get how did you switch that mindset from being in fear to listen i i can hang with the best of these guys still that's a good question um that's why podcast (laughs) yeah i think it's like the fear's still there right but I, i think they're I recognize that everybody has some amount of fear in their head. Um, but like, I, I got to the point where I wasn't going to let the fear just prevent me from finding out like what I could do, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and it wasn't about like, I think I can hang with the best because I, I, I truly had no idea. I, I didn't really know how fit I was compared to anybody else because I hadn't competed like individually in so long. Um, I didn't have, you know, a, a training camp to compare scores off of or anything. Um, and like, there was a few times where like, you know, maybe I did do a workout that someone else had done that was a good athlete. And like, I was like, okay, like I, I can actually like compare that. And mm-hmm. I ended up getting a few people following like the Imam company who were very talented and very fit. And I could kind of start gauging myself off of that, but I still didn't really know I'd been out of it for long enough. And, um but that 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 question like that like the the not knowing kind of stopped mattering it's like well i'm just gonna go see like kind of what i'm capable of and see like where this journey goes and like tell myself that like the result is not why you're doing this like you're not doing this so you can qualify you're doing this because you love this this path you love this journey so like just go do it you know mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I see fear as kind of like a handicap too, because it actually like stops people for, for doing stuff. Like for yeah. example, when I was working at a, a children's hospital in the ER, I was talking to this lady and she's like, where are you from? And I'm like, Oh, I'm from Massachusetts. And they're from there. It was in Atlanta. And so she's like, where's that? And I was like, Massachusetts. And so she's like, yeah. And I'm like, Oh, it's like North of like north of like Connecticut, you know, New York and stuff like that. It's, it's really close to that area. She's like, oh, I've never left Atlanta. People don't want to like, yeah. They... Uh, and I'm like, w- like, you can't let like, can't you can't let fear hinder yeah. like, like you're going to regret everything in life. You're like, I never let a, left Atlanta. Like I yeah. could have gone to like the next state over or like or visit a whole bunch of places. Yeah. Um. I think I've like I've, I've certainly battled fear so much through my life, um, fear of of not getting good enough GPA in undergrad, fear of not getting into a good graduate school, fear of not matching in a residency, fear of not qualifying for the CrossFit Games, like the fear goes on and on. And like I think actually over the past few months, like I kept reflecting on all, all of those times I was so afraid of the failure that was to come. And all the times where like I did fail, because I've certainly failed in a, in a in enough things yeah. to to be you know familiar with failure. Mm-hmm. Like the world kept turning. I just figured out a new way. I found out like a new path or like the next like how to reapproach the thing that I had failed, so I can try again. Like I realized that like failure's just failure's just part of it, dude. You know, it's like okay, like you're going to fail, like. And you should be the person that is failing things because if you're always like reaching your goal, then maybe you're just not ambitious enough. So I was like, dude, like who gives who gives a a shit if you go and fail this thing? Like go do the thing anyway, dude. Yeah. And so I think that was a big part of it. It's just like, okay, like who gives like who cares if you don't if you don't attain the goal that you wanted? It's like you're gonna set a new one the day you get back anyway. And you're going to go try to chase that. And maybe you fail at that one or maybe you like succeed. But like I realized that like the game's the thing I'm playing and it's not like the goalpost I'm trying to reach. I just want to keep playing the game, whatever mm-hmm. that game is, whether that's like 
whether that's work or whether that's CrossFit or whether that's like the next thing that I do after CrossFit is like the game's going to keep getting played. And that's what I want to do. I don't like, I will never be finished, you know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, and it's like, I've had fear myself too, even like starting like my, my former t-shirt company type one lifting and even starting this podcast, it was like fear. And then, um, I, I read a book called screw it, just do it by Richard Branson. It's like, it's a real short book. It pretty much talks about like how he was like, just, screw it. I'm just going to do it anyway. Like whatever. Yeah. I'm going to go to this person's house. I'm going to do this, 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 and then came out to what, like what it is. And so I was like, Oh, okay. I should do that. And so, you know, if I didn't do, if I didn't do half the stuff, I wouldn't be, you know, here talking to you or even doing other things too. Yeah, absolutely. Dude. Like, yeah, the fear is always going to be there. It's whether or not you face it. And like, I and mean, I think that's another thing that like you've probably seen it is like, bravery is not the absence of fear bravery is doing the thing while you're afraid of it anyway you know mm -hmm. yeah did now um throughout the whole process were you talking to anybody or like you know did you read a book that kind of you know other than your dad and you know and travis or whoever else like you know did, did was there something that like was like sparked that sparked and said okay like this fear is not gonna you know be me at all yeah so like i mean that fear side of things was recent um we're like, I guess the, cause I mean, throughout competing, I've always had like those, those small fears, but like this year was a little bit different in the sense that like fear almost stopped me from continue, like from trying. Yeah. Like it legitimately, like the fear was that strong in my head. And yeah, there were a lot of people I talked to. There were a lot of books I read, um, <laughs> you know, from you know, my wife, uh, you know, discussing like whether or not I should do it or this, that, and that, like, talking to her about like my desire to even want to do it um you know I, I go i go to therapy every couple weeks I, I see a therapist now and like that's been insanely helpful for like working through the things in my head because i'm a pretty closed off person and so it took me like working with a, a an individual that like i found trust in and opened to like a like a relationship where i could be vulnerable with and like that's hard for me to admit on this podcast to, like talk about like i you know i, I go to therapy <laughs> frequently um because that's a new thing for me over the past few months but like honestly it's been one of the most most beneficial things for me in in all walks of life um and like diving into like why am i afraid like why do i care about what other people think like why why all these things like and realizing that like i don't have to care about what everyone else thinks about me all the time right um yeah. you know there's a there's a few books that i've read that have been pretty insightful over the past few months and so like i think it helped me kind of callous my mind over a good bit and and find a, a good bit of clarity and uh yeah it's been it's been good it's awesome yeah I, i've i do therapy too as well so i mean it's been a huge help like 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 yourself i'm pretty you know st I, I don't know my wife said i'm kind of stoic a little bit that i don't say anything or just yeah. like kind of you know, I'm just quiet until like the last minute I'll say, Oh, Hey, I got, I got this going on or I got, I got this. And so she's like, what, what, yeah. what the hell? Like, you know, why yeah. didn't you tell me this earlier? So like now it's like, even like with podcasting, I like, I try not to tell her like last minute saying, Hey, I got a podcast like this day, like, you know, like the, the day before I try to tell her like at least a good time in advance. So she's like prepared that like, Hey, he's going to be down here from like eight 30 to 10 o'clock or whatever, or God knows how long. So, yeah. and, and like, you know, all that stuff, Communi I think communication is key too. So, and obviously, um, with your wife and stuff like that, when you guys, when you talked about, Hey, I want to give this another go. Um, what was she saying throughout the whole process? She's been the most supportive human in my life, man. Um, and so like, dude, she's always said like, you know, I don't care if we have kids, I don't care how many jobs you work. I don't care how many companies you're working for. Like if you want to do this, like we'll we'll figure out a way to make it happen, and uh, so, so like you know, I ask her, you know, like should I compete this year? She's like, I think you should do it as long as you want to, you know, like as long as you have a desire to and like you're enjoying it. Like there's no reason for you to ever stop. Like we will we will find the time, you know. So, she's awesome. Yeah, that that's awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. And I see her in some of the videos that you post with uh, you doing the workouts. Yeah. In the back. Yeah, she's she's in the garage a lot. 
Yeah. So is she the head content creator of uh, Emom and in, in your uh, Instagram page? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's me, man. She does the apparel, though. She does okay. the apparel now. She does the apparel. She's she's an accountant. She's a CPA. So she does her she does her books now. Um, she she keeps tabs on all that stuff. She she puts out orders. There's there's always a stack of like boxes and bags by the door. She's like, hey, you got to bring those to you like the post office. Like, mm -hmm. sweet, good, let's go. Yeah, you know? yeah. Keep keep it going. Keep it coming. Yeah. So, um, but, um, so with you starting that, you talked about companies before, so you started the EMOM company. So yes, can you go a little bit more in depth about that? And like, why did you start it? And yeah. you know, and how it's, where it's going now? Yeah. Um, so like that 2022, like after the 2021 season, 2021, uh, was the last year I competed at the CrossFit games. I was living in Oklahoma that year I competed. Um, I moved home in August to start working for my father and he was actually, he had gotten very sick with COVID and was out of work for a couple months. Um, not only was he out of work from COVID, he had, he had also taken like two weeks off to go watch me in Madison and got sick in Madison. So then when he got oh, home, geez. he was, he was yeah. out of work for a while. Uh, and so I, I moved home early from Oklahoma because the work was getting so piled up he asked me to come home to like start taking care of, of business and he was actually afraid that he might he might pass um it was he was on an oxygen tank and it was actually like man it was it was a thursday and i called him i was like hey dad like if you need me to come home like you would tell me right because at this point it had been like a couple weeks and he was not getting better mm -hmm. he's like yeah i'd let you know i was like okay and he's like, I was like, well, do you? He's like, no, I'm good right now. And then the next day, he's like, how how soon can you get home? So I was like, I'll be there Monday, dude. Uh, we we picked up a couple U-Hauls, put as much of the, our, our furniture and stuff in our house. And at, that was in our house as we could into a U-Haul. Drove home on Sunday and uh, unpacked on Monday. And Tuesday, I started working with him. Um, after a few weeks, we kind of got some things under control. I was able to catch up on a good bit of work. Uh, and, uh, I went back to Oklahoma for a week to finish packing up the house and then moved home and was working. And it, we, we were still a little bit backed up. So I was doing quite a lot, getting adjusted to the new schedule, getting it like adjusted to every new hospital I was working in. So it was, it was quite overwhelming. And, uh, I just didn't have that one constant of my life as much of like training and like feeling good about like what I did physically. And so I think in November, like I was like, okay, like I'm just going to start doing my own thing. Like, I, it, cause I, I was actually, I was either following like jump ship training with Seth, who used to be part of misfits. Um, mm -hmm. I think I was following like his, his stuff. And I just like, wasn't where I used to be. And like that ego played in, I was like, I'm not fit anymore. Like not my times don't compare to anybody anymore. Like this is, this is making me, <laughs> it's making me sad. It's like, I'm just going <laughs> to do my own thing. So like, I don't think about anybody else. And there was like, I mean, I used to do during residency, whenever I would get home at like 630, I only had like 30 minutes because like I, I wouldn't train late. I'd refuse to train late because it messed me up for the whole next day. I'd yep. do a 30 minute email. I'd pick a barbell movement or like a, a loaded movement. I would do a body weight movement and I would pick a machine and I would just rock it for 30 minutes or 10 rounds. And so in November, I was like, all right, I'm just going to start doing 30 minute emails, dude. I'll ride as many of them as I can and I'm going to start <laughs> doing them. So like I did my first one and dude, like I remember how good it felt to do something in the gym again and feel like I accomplished something like something really difficult and like it just felt good and like it brought me back man um and so my brother-in-law my sister my wife were all in the gym with me that day and um I was like I talked to my bro my, my brother-in-law Ron his name's Ron um it's like do you think other people would want to like see these workouts? He's like, Hell yeah. I mean, yeah, like, why not? I was like, okay. And so uh, I thought of the name, like the Imam Company, thought it sounded snazzy. Um, I don't know, like it, something drew me to the name, uh, created the Instagram profile. And then just like whenever I would do 30 minute Imams or an Imam of any sort, I would snag a video and throw it on Instagram. And, you know, I would do that like two to three days a week. Cause I didn't owe anything to anybody. I wasn't doing them every single day. Yeah. And, uh, 
that after a while we had kind of built up a repertoire of like workouts and people were like following and people started asking for like a daily program. I was like, dude, I don't, I'm not doing a daily program. I don't want to <laughs> owe anybody five days of programming per week. That's too much work for me. Um, no one, I don't think enough people would follow it to like make it worth my time. And then enough people started asking. Yeah. So again, I went to my brother-in-law I was like, Hey, like, what do you think about like, maybe we make this like an actual thing and like we give it a shot. He's like, he's like, why don't you beta test it on someone first? And so like I had a buddy who's in law school, super busy kid. I was like, can I beta test this? Like, let me just see if I can even come up with like five on the minute style workouts a week, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I ran with that for a couple months and he's like, dude, it's good. I like it. It's fun. Um, so I kind of developed like a, you know, rubric of like how the week would look. And we started a daily program uh and we try to do everything in like within like a 45 minute time so like a warm-up every like every other day was a lift every other day was a full like so it'd be like every other day would be like a, a short lift into an imam or an imam into a short lift mm -hmm. and then the other days were like long imams and every saturday was a 40 minute imam and there's no lifting it's like just a 40 like you it's like everyone dude everyone wants to go in on saturday and get a long grinding workout and then be just like wipe the rest of the day go spend time with their kids or go barbecue or just whatever like yeah. you got like Saturday was your hard day and we would throw in like minimal equipment and bodyweight workouts every week. So that the idea that we started behind was like to give people a heavy dose of fitness in a short amount of time without having to like worry about like, was my performance good? Did I do enough um, to have like, it was like get in and like whenever you're out, you have no questions. You did the work, you know? Mm -hmm. And so like that was kind of our philosophy that we started behind with like our daily program. And like that grew slowly. Like we started with like 25 members. We grew to 50. I remember like the day we hit 50. I was like, dude, this is so cool. Like 50 people care about what I'm writing. You yeah. know, yeah. And we would get like, you know, on, on months where we got like 15 trials. I was like, that's so cool. We got 15 trials, like 15 new people tried it. And um, we slowly grew. We added in like a competitive program. Um, and that started out really slowly and it slowly grew. And uh, this year, I think it's been like two and a half years um, since like I started the Instagram. Um, we have like our following exploded at the beginning of the year from like a few thousand followers on Instagram to like 90,000 out of like nowhere. And 90,000? Uh, 90, that's almost 90,000. Yeah. Holy crap. And like for that's no reason, <laughs> like no reason. That is insane. Insane. Yeah. Um, and like we have a pretty awesome membership. We have an awesome community. And uh like I had no I had no expectation for it ever other than like I wanted to provide value to the the community that followed us. And yeah. even to this day, I am very adamant about continuing to add value to our community. And so people can go to our Instagram page and see hundreds of workouts for free and uh like that like I, that is still what i care about is just providing value to the the people who have been there with us and like are hopping on with us now you know yeah yeah and you have great some great testimonials on the website too of like just like quick blog posts on like you know people that do the emom you know company workouts and stuff like that and how good they feel like during the workouts and how they feel better from when they first started yeah um it's it's all very simple stuff it's just gritty and like that's it doesn't have to be complicated it's just got to be consistent you know you just got to get yeah. in there every day and just make it happen and then we have a pretty good format of just like start the clock and get going yeah now have you had like other people from like different groups kind of like help you out like pave the way to like you know for memberships or anything like that how do you mean like, you know, maybe the guys from Misfit be like, hey, you know, you may want to try this way instead of this way. Like, kind of like um, a, I don't know, gotcha. like a, you know, someone to watch over. Um, Not not really, per se. Um, I did talk to Seth Page with Jump Ship because he was my person. He was like, he was a personal coach for me my yeah. last year I competed in CrossFit and is a, a good friend of mine. And um. You know, like whenever I first started, he liked the idea of like the on the minute style training and I was getting like I was feeling awesome doing it and like people enjoyed it. And, you know, 
things were like catching people's eyes. It's like really hard grinding 30 minute imams. And so like, I kind of talked to him a little bit about how he grew because he's grown very successfully. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. From like very small to like, he's doing very well now. And, um, you know, asked like some tidbits there. Uh, and so like, he definitely gave some guidance, but you know, my brother-in-law and I like, you know, he, he's a project manager and kind of has, you know, overseen some things that like grew with companies. And, mm -hmm. um, we, we, we've had like, you know, there's a friend of mine from underdogs who's been like, dude, you should try this. Uh, like, I think this challenge would like hit off and I was like, okay, like we'll try it. And that challenge <laughs> like doubled our membership in a month. <laughs> and I was like, nope, nice. that works, you know? Yeah. And so yeah. like, yeah, we, we've, I've been lucky to like just pick up from a few, like, I will never say like anything I've ever done is certainly not at all by like just my, my work, like singularly, like there's always been a team behind it. And there've been like a few things picked up from other people that have been massive. And so now, you know, we've got, you know, a team of like five people who are working on this little project with me and uh, it's pretty cool. Nice. Nice. And so how many members do you have now? It's a bit over 500 now. Oh. And uh, at the first of the year, I think we were at 120. That's crazy. Yeah. So it, so is it almost at the point that you can leave your other job to do this full time? Or is that even like in the I don't in want your to. mind? I yeah. don't want to. Um, so the, the physics company that I work for, I own with my father. Yeah. Um, and I love what I do. It allows it, it has allowed me and still allows me to do the imam company and reinvest every dollar that we make back into either people the, or the community and helping mm -hmm. it grow. So, I mean, we, we do challenge like the first challenge we did was like, okay, we're like, we're going to give away $1,500 to Rogue. And if I was taking money out of the bank account for myself to like you know, to, to pay any kind of bills, like I wouldn't have that freedom to give back. True. Yeah. And so, like, we just ended it, we just ended a challenge last night. Well, I'm about to pay out like two grand in prizes, but like I get to do that because I don't take a penny out of the bank account. Yeah. Um, it all gets to go right back to the people who support us and, and, you know, trying to grow as much as we can. And so like the physics allows me to do that. Mm -hmm. And so I, and I, I love what I do. Um, I, I have no intentions of stopping that um, because I do love it. And so like, yeah, I, I, as long as I can do both well, I'll keep doing both. Yeah. Now, how do you juggle all three of the, like, you know, training, Iman company, Iman company, and like the physics company? Like, how do you juggle, even, even hanging out with your wife and like doing out stuff on the outside? Like, how, how do you balance like all those things at once? Um, it, it was, a, I mean, it's a, it's a gradual growth of like things that you do day to day, right? This, you know, at, at one point I was just a student and just a CrossFitter. Um, and then I was just, you know, working for my father and training whenever I could. And then, you know, I started the mom company and started that. So it's just like all these things just kind of become routine. So like at some point your day just starts at five 30 and you start working as much as you can and you train when you can. And then at seven 30, you're like, okay, I'm done. So like, I try to, I try to do as much as I can each day. Um, during this time of the season, it's really challenging uh, to not get. It's been like that's that's one of the things over the past couple weeks, especially like through quarterfinals. It's very challenging. Um, like I'm I'm a little bit behind on work for physics, but I also know that like this is maybe my last chance to compete at semis, and it might be my last year. And so like it's okay to put the focus here because on Wednesday when I get back, I've got a full day of work. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll just I'll just steamroll as much as I can then. So like sometimes there are surges of one or the other, and sometimes it's all even keel. And the the biggest thing is just sort of like just to keep doing productive work as much as you can, as frequently as you can, and have a time where you shut it off. And for me, that's like seven or seven thirty. And yeah. uh, I, I get a couple hours with Kristen at night, and then it's off to sleep, and then we wake up and back to work. You know. Mm -hmm. um, but like, I don't get, I used to get overwhelmed with it, I think, because it was so much. And I was like, you know, feeling very spread thin until I just, I, I, I wrestled with the thought enough of like, okay, I just love doing all of these things.
And so like I get to wake up and I get to start working and I love it. And then I get to work out, which I love. And then I get to eat breakfast, shower and go to work, which I love. Mm -hmm. And then after I'm done with work, I'll go back to the gym, which I love. And then I'll come home and I'll spend time with my wife. Which and you so, love. So who I love. <laughs> and so it's like sometimes yeah, it's it's that doesn't make it easy. Yeah. But I just I like the process, man. I, I like the mm -hmm. journey. I like the things that I do. Yeah, you're you it seems like you're like a big schedule guy, which dude, no? schedules. Yeah. <laughs> I have a scheduler, but like with with the physics work, it's like some days I'm I'm an, like, I mean, I work most of, of my job in New Orleans, which is about an hour away. And so like, dude, there's days where I start at six or 6.30 AM. There's days where I don't start till four, you know, 4 PM. Mm -hmm. It's just all over the place, which is why I just do as much as I can with the time that I'm allotted, which is why I wake up at five or 5.30 every morning to start programming. And then if I can, I'll go work out or I'll just go straight to work or like just, it's just like day to day. And it's, I think. It's just habits. It's not routine, if that makes sense. Yeah. No, I, I got it. Yeah, because I I'm a, I'm from I got a military background, and we had like a schedule, kind of like almost like a routine too, as well. And it's like yeah. it's really hard. I got really comfortable doing that kind of routine stuff, and then like I got way too comfortable, and then it started affecting like other things in my life that was like, you know, to be honest with you, more important. So, yeah, yeah it's like it's got to you got to have that balance of everything. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I try to figure out what the day is going to look like the day before. Um, but I mean, like, you know, last weekend is supposed to be a three day training weekend from Friday to Sunday, but I worked half of, of Saturday. And so as soon as I was done working, I was like, I got, I got to find a gym. Uh, I, I got some buddies in New Orleans. You've got gyms. I got some friends in Baton Rouge. You've got gyms. So I found a gym to go train at for you know, maybe an hour and 20 minutes. And I went to a baby shower for my, or a gender reveal for my younger sister. She's having her, her first son, her first child son. Nice. And, uh, I was like, all right, I'll be here for two hours and then I will go home and I will go to the garage and I will train until 7 PM and then I'll eat dinner and I'll go to sleep. And that was my Saturday. Woke up, nice. worked, trained, spent some time with family, trained, go to bed. Yeah. Did you, so speaking about gender reveal, did you see that you ever fall? Do you follow that Instagram page? Gym weirdos? No. <laughs> oh, like, so I, gosh, I wish I pulled, I wish I had this video up. So they did a gender reveal party and the guy was a CrossFitter. And so he had like these like 225, like, like, like two bumper plates on each side. And they had these like packets of like color. So yeah. when he dropped, when he dropped the barbell, the color would shoot out to see if it's a boy or a girl. And yeah. so he took it up and just like slammed it on the ground as hard as he could. And it, and it turned out blue. But if you notice, I'll, I'll send it to you too. So, uh, but if you notice on, the, on like the bottom left-hand corner, the, the powder just shot right at this girl's face and just like covered oh, her no. whole, like all blue, like covered her face, her hair, her dress, like everything was completely covered in blue. It was hilarious. Dude, that's almost exactly what my, we had six of those like confetti powder poppers in the yard. The entire yard was blue and full of confetti. There was confetti in like, dude, like 300 feet in the neighbor's yard. Like these things were like three feet long poppers. They oh, weren't, yeah. they weren't, you know, your foot long poppers. They were huge. The entire yard was blue. Yeah. Yeah. We, we had the, well, I had the ones with like the sparkles and stuff like that. You just like twist it and it, like pops yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. So, so my wife did an ad for um like what was it a um it was for like a cover for like you know a crib like a, a you know a day crib or something like that if you go on to travel so like when the kids sleep in the middle of the day it's not like it's completely blacked out and they can't see anything yeah, yeah. and so it was like a it was like a giveaway and so he popped it off and we took a picture and it was at this like random company's like wall and like it was like all all the all the confetti was like all over the grass and so i had to go back and get a leaf vacuum and like literally for like <laughs> three hours just vacuum all that shit up because it was like i didn't want to get in trouble because we my wife was taking pictures there and i'm like god damn it, this is the worst <laughs> thing ever so yeah it was it was Paid not fun sure. yeah oh yeah yeah it did it did um especially when she's has a huge following too so yeah um Three is a three twenty. Three hundred and twenty thousand. That's big. Yes. Damn. Yeah. Well, she's she's probably got more now. So she she does. Uh, she's a fashion influencer. 
Damn, dude. That's dope. That's every yeah. woman's dream. Pretty much. Yeah. Like yeah. I'll like I could I could send you an Instagram page because okay. like your wife your wife would probably love it. So I've got a question probably, for yeah. You. So do have have you ever heard people be, be like, I wish I could just be like an influencer? Like that would be so easy. Have yes. you ever heard that? Yeah. Like I wish I could just be like a fashion influencer and just try on clothes all day. Like I would love that job. Like mm. I'm like, hey, you know, like how hard they work, like daily, to do this kind of stuff. So, 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 let me, I'll, I'll give you a quick breakdown on it. So, so when we first, well, so when, she, like, before Instagram came about, she started doing a blog post for fashion, and so every Sunday, she would take like, she would wear five different articles of clothing, and I would take pictures with a camera, and so this was like more, like this is before, like the, I think the iPhone was even out too, so. I would take the pictures, you know, and I she look at them. She's like, "Oh, this one's blurry. Do it again." And so we got to do yeah. it again, different poses, and we did it around the neighborhood, where you know it'd be like, "Okay, I need to take a picture here." And we go to like, we go to like these random places too, of like, yeah. like places we shouldn't even be near, but it was like a cool background, so we just took went in there anyway, and like we she and so, yeah, it, it's it's very hard work, and then she did it for years. Yeah, she's yeah years and like just put in the hours to be able to do it you know yeah and then there's times where she would do um in her reels she would do try-ons of like different clothing and stuff like that and i'd be in, i'd be in our master bedroom steaming all the clothes that she just got from amazon because like yeah. she needed to get them done and, and take pictures of them today so she's like Can you seen this Can you seen that and it's just like yeah uh, dude, over there and always taking part yeah she put a lot of work in. like obviously like me taking pictures of her all the time and she's, yeah there was one time there's a couple times i was like okay i'm gonna go to the gym she's like he, and like i took pre-workout and so she's like can you take a couple pictures of me and i'm like <laughs> how many outfits are you doing and she's like five and i was like five and like pre-workout already kicked in and i'm like made alanine tingles like you can't yeah take, yeah can't yeah any like, photo. <laughs> yeah and i was like oh god and then like i i'm a graphic designer from I went to graduate college with a graphic design degree. So I was yeah. trying to put my artistic twist into taking pictures. And she's like, no, I have to be in the middle. I can't be off the side. It has yeah. to be in the middle. And so you I was can't like, do one thirds though. You can't do one thirds. No, there, there's been a couple of times we've gotten into like a little arguments <laughs> here and there. So, I mean, sure. it happens, but, but she like, e even people like pot, like podcasts or even like doing YouTube or whatnot. It's like, they, people think it's so easy and it's not. It's just like being a cro professional CrossFit athlete. It is not easy whatsoever. No, it's it takes a lot of time and a lot of consistency, consistency and a lot of work, and it's mm -hmm. competitive. So, yeah, it's not just I'm going to be a blogger and or a, I'm going to be a, a fashion influencer and like this is going to be a fun life. It's like no, you got to grind for a long time, and then once yeah. you make it, you have to keep grinding. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not going to lie that we've we've been on some trips we've never paid a dime for anything at that trip that's awesome that's dope. so yeah and it's cool like we'd have kids too and we have two kids and like they would bring us they like literally we would get packages when we first started like really kicking it off and in on instagram it was like we were really getting packages every single day of just that's clothes or something else like that that she wanted that, that people wanted to promote for her now all the years later now it is every woman's dream to be a fashion influencer once the yeah. free clothes started coming in now yeah. it's time you know yeah and, pe and, pe and people try and it's like it's it's not like the group of people that they're looking for yeah. so to like do the fashion stuff and so it's like yeah it's it's a tough market out there i'm telling you it's competitive man. I'm telling yeah you, yeah, yeah. Sure. it's 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 insane like i i can tell you so many stories it's it's but dude, it's good crazy. for her that's awesome yeah yeah there. But um, but anyway, so you made it to semifinals, and I believe you are the number one person in the North American West. On the leaderboard, I'm number two. I was number one after the open. Oh, okay. After after quarterfinals, I was number two, but really I'm number three. So Patrick Vellner was ahead of me until he got hit with penalties on his box step up. So I still oh. think like, I still I'd still say number three. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, I would, I mean, he did him wrong then. So according to CrossFit, he did. Yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to stay on, I'm not going to ride that. Like I'll ride that fence. I'm not going to jump on one side or the other, but yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. He's a state dude. Super stay neutral. So I'll just, yeah. I'll just, yeah. I'll stay in, 
I'll hold my place in third. For third. Yeah. So, um, so do you saw obviously the I saw the workouts. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, obviously they're not email workouts. So how are you going to be able to handle all the, <laughs> the movements and stuff? The same way I did the open, the same way I did quarterfinals, I guess. Just go, just go do the thing. Yeah. Um, no, nah, man, I, I don't just do on the minute style training, although it is like a big part of my training, especially. The I know, season. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I love the, the style of, of, of semis. I like, I like the grittiness and the grind. Um, I like the simplicity of everything as far as we know. Like, I don't know what will change or, you know, what they might throw in that we don't know about. For the most part, they're pretty simple and straightforward and gritty. And I like that. Um, so I think it's, I think it's beautiful programming. So how cool is it for you to be back? In, is it, Car it's it back at Carson, right? In Carson, the same yeah. yeah. So how cool is that to be back at the Carson? That's epic. I've I've been there twice just to spectate. I've never competed there. Oh, you haven't? Mm -mm. Oh, um, damn. 2017 was the first year in Madison. 2018, oh, that's right. first year I qualified. Okay. And so uh, it's like to be able to go to Carson and actually compete in Carson is like, dude, it's so sick. Like that's whenever I was young, dude, watching the sport and like being a fan of the sport. It's like, dude, I just want to like, I want to run in that soccer stadium. I want to lift in the Coliseum. Like, dude, it's dope. Or the tennis yeah. stadium, rather, not the Coliseum. But yeah, dude, like, super cool. Dude, that crowd's going to be wild, too. Wild. I hope so, yeah. Yeah, it will. So we're, we're going to need some people yelling at us for some of those workouts, man. Yeah, yeah. So do you have, do you, when you're looking at the workouts, did you see any that are, like, kind of, like, home runs for you or, like, saying, saying, like, oh, yeah, I could really do some damage with this group? I've never looked at a single workout and thought that. I've never... I've never looked at anything and been like, okay, I'm going to crush it. But like, I'm also not an athlete that has home runs, to be honest. Um, I, I've, I'm like, I'm a decently consistent athlete for the most part. Yeah. Uh, and so like, I don't get real high and I don't get real low, except for, if you know, typically like a one rep max uh, would usually be pretty bad for me. Um, and so like, even if there was something where I was like, oh, dude, like those movements are great for me. I think I can do some damage. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have that mindset because like, I, I always just think that there's going to be someone better. And so like, I just, I know it's going to have to be like a dog fight no matter what, no matter what the event is. And in fact, like the ones that like, the ones that you're good at and like you, you think you could knock out of the park, those aren't the ones where you're like, okay, like this one's going to be easy for me to win. It's like, no, this is the one that's going to hurt the absolute most because I can't yeah. do well at it, you know? Yeah. Um, so I have to be careful with that mindset. And, um, even if there was one that I saw, like I'd have to be careful with the mindset, but there isn't anything that I really look at and I'm like, okay, like I could smash it. Um, I just, I hope to be consistent across them enough that I can, you know, that I can have a good weekend. But again, I also can't control the other savages on the field because every single one of those athletes is capable, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So are you going to be able to like chat with your, your therapist or somebody that like can kind of like, take you off the ledge if you're like not in the right place at all for that weekend i got my wife i got my friends well, that, you know? yeah um and i think in competition there's never been a ledge like i mean in 2021 at the west coast classic the last semis i competed at as an individual i tore my ucl in the first event yeah um so i, I had to compete in five more events with a with a torn ucl on my elbow and even then it was like, okay, like I'm not gonna there's no there's no ledge to to walk off of. I'm just gonna see if I can like take this next event. And uh so like even still it's like you just take it one at event at a time and and put your head down and and play the cards that you're that you got and uh like just kind of see what you're capable of. And like I think that's the biggest thing for me over the weekend is just like what am I like what can I do in this event? Can I run an awesome race? Can I, can I like optimize this workout for me? Can I keep my blinders on? Can I, can I, you know, push whenever it's necessary? Like what, what can, what can I do compared to the field? Like without comparing myself to the field, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you win, you're going to tell each John Young to eat shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, John Young's a good guy. He, uh, he, he, 
he he never like insulted me with anything he said um I never took any offense to it. Like I, I do yeah. we'll put the shirt in the mail for him and all in good jest. We're going to ship it out. To him. <laughs> um, but like, uh, I mean, I, I don't mind being called washed up or like, I don't dude. I don't care. If people, I don't care. If people know my name. I don't care. Like I'd rather it be quiet. Like I'd rather no one know who I was or like where I was, you know, if I was even a contender, doesn't matter. Um, Cause like I said, like, the week like the weekend comes like you just go do like what you're capable of and see what see what she can do and it doesn't matter what anyone else has thought previously yeah. um even and that goes for like if everyone was like dude brandon's gonna go win it's like dude that also doesn't matter and in fact that matters less so than anything else that anyone else could say it's because like someone saying you're gonna win is like as there's not a lot of value in it because you have to go do the thing first yeah you know Yep. Now, how did you hear that? So did someone like message you and say, Hey, John Young said this, or were you listen? That's what happened. Yeah. Um, I don't listen to a, a lot of like CrossFit podcasts, honestly, like they, they make me nervous. They give me anxiety. They make me start thinking about like what everyone else is doing all the time mm -hmm. instead of just focusing on like what I'm, what I can do that day for myself in terms of like training or whatever. So I don't listen to a whole lot of like CrossFit podcasts for that reason. Smart, um, very smart. But a friend of mine for uh my buddy over at underdogs um he's like dude you gotta listen to this podcast they this guy is like calling you washed up like saying like you're barely any fitter than he is and like it was after the dubai because like i programmed uh an event for dubai and like i tested all the events well i tested them in the way that they sent them to me which isn't how they were performed at the the event and like saw the time caps were messed up and there's basically saying like, there's no way, like I got these time caps with these events and they're right because I didn't do the same events that they, they use at Dubai, mm -hmm. but that's where it all started. And then it's kind of just been like a, a rolling thing with John Young um, saying something, uh, you know, first was with the open of like, you know, this was the open, there was no skill. It wasn't heavy, um, which is true. Like there wasn't a ton of skill in the open and it wasn't heavy, which is pans well for me. Um, but it just kind of kept rolling, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And you printed those shirts out relatively quick too. We only made four, I think. Oh, that's why. Okay. So that's why yeah. the price of it was that much. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, the shirts are super nice. Like they're these yeah. very nice quality oversized t-shirts. Um, so like, we're not really making a bunch of margin on them, but we're not yeah. trying to lose money on them either. Well, true. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so like those are all doing those are all going through pre-orders but like, yeah we made four i was like i want two we'll send one to john young and we'll have an extra you know nice so yeah that's yeah. awesome yeah very cool so um we're getting close to the end so um i i know we did rapid fire questions last year uh, like a couple years ago so i got some yeah. new ones but uh so what are your goals for the rest of the year crossfit wise and you know personal or business <sighs> with CrossFit, man, it's, I want to, I just want to enjoy the process. Yeah. Um, aside from like, I, I don't want to think about like, you know, I want to be this place or this, whatever. I, I would love to go compete at the CrossFit games like that. Yes. That's a goal, but an overarching goal is like, I want to enjoy this journey. I want to enjoy this, this, this season and just like kind of see like what I'm capable of and like what I'm, what I can do, like with, with the mindset that I have and like the, the focus that I have and the cards that I've got. Um, with business, yeah, I'd love to keep growing the imam company. I'd love to keep being a physicist. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm going to keep doing that as hard as I can. And like, there will be seasons where there's focus on the business and not focus on being fit. Um, and there'll be seasons where I'm focused on being fit and I'm not as focused on the business, but overall you got to focus on them both. And so like, I want to keep growing both of those things. Very cool. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Now, now just to remember, the last time you were on my podcast, you said you were you were going to hang it up. And so you're saying that again. And so did I say that? Yeah. You were saying you were like, kind of like work, you're going to go work for your company, go work for your dad's company. In seasons. It's all in seasons, man. Um, <laughs> I don't, I'm kind of done calling out what the future is going to look like for myself. You know, I just yeah. want to keep doing the things I enjoy doing, seeing where the card, cards fall. Um, I'd love to do an Ironman at some point. So I got to do that before I get too old, you know? uh so like there's things i want to do uh but i love what i'm doing and so um it's just you know the wife and i'll talk after the season and see what's next you know yeah yeah 
Yeah, triathlon. So it's funny. I used to do triathlons before I started doing CrossFit, and so because I was like a, a college athlete, and so yeah. I had nothing else, and I was like, oh, I'll just do triathlons. And so it's it's a it's a it's a bug that really can get you real quick yeah. and financially get, too. Dude, you can go buy oh my bike as much as a house. Put, so take a take a second mortgage out for that cycle, man. Yeah. So the bike <laughs> that the bike that I got was about. 25 to three thousand dollars and 20, the 25 to three or 25 to 30 oh no 25 to three sorry did i say 30 so no, you said three 2500 okay, yeah, to three thousand yeah yeah so and it was funny because the that day i was going to go possibly get that bike i tried another bike that was used and it was about like six thousand dollars yeah. And so they, and then all of a sudden they called me like a couple hours later saying, Hey, we're willing to sell it to you for 2,800. And so it was like, this bike was my dream bike. I wanted yeah. it so bad, but I, I stuck with this other one and I, I'm like, Oh God, I'm like, and then I don't even <laughs> use it now. I, that's the problem. I don't use it. So, cause like, I can't, Maybe I'll borrow it if I can go do an Ironman. Dude, I, it is way I'm too like, big for you. Way yeah, too yeah. big for you. So I'm only five, five. Yeah. No, you're I'm not. Sure. I'm six foot. -ish. No, but uh, but but it's it's like the biggest bike frame you can get. It's a double XL. It's just yeah, massive. yeah, pretty yeah. much. It's a double XL for specialized, and so it's yeah. like, and I can't I can't ride it with like doing like normal rides with my kids and stuff because the seats <laughs> all the way up, and so I'm like literally like holding the the elbow rest up, yeah. just sitting up and just looking super awkward. It's not a so. casual ride bike. It's not the no, beach cruiser. No, <laughs> no. Know? I wish I wish I had a beach cruiser, but yeah, yeah. it's. That we I haven't gotten on that bike for a very very long time, but when I was in the tri doing triathlons, I was hooked, absolutely yeah. hooked. So, yeah. So we'll see if I uh, touch on one of those. There's a lot of there's a lot of challenges out there, and like, that's like what I said. Like, um, this is always going to be the next thing I want to go get like to go give a run at. So we'll we'll see what happens, man. Yeah. Um, next question. So obviously you've worked with a bunch of sponsors before, and so what are you haven't done, you haven't worked with ten thousand. Worked with ten thousand. That was one. I, I I would say I've worked with a bunch of sponsors. Um, okay, that was probably like my my biggest relationship before they kind of cut cross it off. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so you've had worked with sponsors. This is not one sponsor before. So, if if a sponsor wanted wanted to come up with you with you and wanted to sponsor you, what kind of company would you want to work for and like you know have like a good relationship with? Yeah. Um. So that's why I don't work with a. A bunch of people i think is because one I, I don't ask for things ever i don't like to ask for things but i i would want to work with someone that i believe in the product and i use the product religiously yeah. and there's just not a lot of things that like i use religiously you know um that uh that people have like approached with and so like i haven't worked with like a bunch of people and so like there there are things that I, I do use religiously i just haven't been approached by anybody with them you know and so that that is the only thing it's like if i use it i would i would love to support it but i, I don't want to support something and like push it and pedal it I, i'm also not really a salesman dude i don't like to sell people on anything i'm not good at it yeah. i don't like i don't like to push people on things <laughs> so I, I don't want to push some something onto my like my following or my community that i don't wholeheartedly believe in and use daily you know mm -hmm. Yeah. And that, that's what I do too. So like the companies down below, like I use every single one of them. So it's like, yeah. I don't want to like give someone snake oil and be like, Oh, this is the greatest thing ever. You know, right. and all of a sudden right. be like, no, this is garbage. Right. So yeah, that's, that's the one thing that's like, if I use it, I'd love to support it. In fact, there's things that I use that I pay for that I support and like I, I'll, I'll talk about or like I'll post and whatever. But, um, outside of that. Yeah. All right. Uh, next question. What is in your gym bag? Oh, a lot of stuff. Like, man, I got two belts. I have some, I have like three gymnastics grips. I got four or five jump ropes. I got a lot of thumb tape. I have a lot of sock bands that I wear on my wrists. Um, that's about it, dude. Always a you pair know, of shoes, shorts, and shirts. Do you wear but lifters? I, no. What? Yeah, I don't. Really wow, know. even with that three sixty five squat clean, that was with no lifters. Yeah, those are in rads. Holy I actually, crap. I wasn't wearing knee sleeves the first time I attempted it, and I I failed it, 
And I was over at Underdog out in Vegas, and Kiefer was like, "Dude, go get my knee sleeves off the lockers. They're old as hell. They're probably like they're probably like you know real taut." So and like pulled them up and hit 365 with a belt and knee sleeves and flats. Damn. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, so we got a next question. So what is one thing that not a lot of people know about you? Mm, you, you already found out, dude, I go to therapy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, I don't know. Like I all right, I'll I'll give you one. So I'm a huge Silver Surfer fan. So what that's that? like, it's a wait. Superhero. He's like a superhero. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm like, I have I have his like first. I have his first issue like in a comic book graded. I have like a poster of him like chilling out my kid, my son's room. That's like okay. from like the 1980s. Like I have like stacks of like comic books of of the Silver Surfer because I think he's so cool and like no one really knows that I'm like a comic book dork and a silver yeah. surfer fan. So that's something like, something like stupid like that. Okay. So like whenever I was young, dude, my favorite movie was the Patriot with Mel Gibson. Like love <laughs> okay. that movie, dude. So I, whenever I was a kid in like fourth or fifth grade, you didn't have to have um, an ATF license to yet net to ship black powder rifles or muskets to an ATF. You could just order them straight from the website and ship them to your house. So I've got like five or six black powder muskets because I was in love with the Patriot. That's like, dope. You know, yeah, I was like a fourth, like a fifth grader, just like all these muskets. I'd shoot them like every weekend, dude. Um, but yeah, that's yeah, I still got them all. They look that's like awesome. They're, they're antique looking now, you know. But have you have you shot any off lately at all? Or it's been a very long time. And in fact, Whenever I started working for my dad, I got him a Christmas gift uh, with two dueling black powder single shot pistols. They're like beautiful dueling Italian made pistols. And I got them engraved with like father, like son with his name on the bottom of one and my name on the bottom of the other. Wow. So, and we never, like we wanted to shoot them like as like a, like almost like ceremonial thing. We just, we just never did. I mean, wh why would you want to ruin it? Right. Like they're, dude, they're gorgeous. They're so pretty. Yeah, it's like they're like so, I mean they're big too. They're like they're like this big. They look like I mean they're cool. Yeah, and if you have the gunpowder, just shoot off. It's already gonna stain stain the gun, so it's like not even yeah. worth it. Yeah. So yeah, we haven't touched them. So you should have put like America on, on like the top part of it, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, all right. So last two questions. So um, this one's a little personal. Pers personal. So let's just say it's your last day on Earth, and all your friends are around you. And how do you want them to know you as? Man. Or even like people that don't know you. Like, how do you want them to know you as? I just, I just want them to know that I love them. Um, I don't um, There's not much else that's more important than that, man. Mm-hmm. All my, all my friends, all my family, like it doesn't care what they thought I was a, a hard worker, a CrossFit athlete, a physicist, a, you know, a son, a brother, a dad. I just want them to know that I loved them and I want them to love me. Damn. Out of the 172 episodes that I've done on this podcast, no one said that. Like I've the love part, like no one, no one. So that's awesome. I, that, yeah, I was not expecting that. So that's very yeah. cool. Um, Last question. So where can people reach out to you about the Imam company, um, you know, getting involved with Imam or anything like that? Like where can they reach out to you? Yeah. Um, our Instagram page, the underscore Imam underscore company. Um, we got hundreds of free workouts out there. We got a lot of, like I said, I always want to provide value. We've got challenges. So hop on the challenges, man. They're taking money out of my pocket and putting it in yours. We're giving away a free watch on this last one, a free Garmin. So that was cool. Um, and then all of the other information is always in that link in the bio that I don't I don't pay attention to anymore because our <laughs> marketer is awesome and she takes care of all that. Nice. So, Very cool. Yes, yeah. Well, hey, thank you for coming on. And I'm sorry I had to delay it another week. So you no, had to dude, do literally do two good, podcasts. Man. So I appreciate but, uh, you. Yeah, dude, it's like I, I can't believe it's been only two years. It's been two years since we last talked and like, it's all it's like crazy. the first time it was great talking to you and it's even better now. So yeah, you so know, much. you're well, you're welcome to come on the show man, you, anytime you've you want so much in two years too, man. I've been seeing yeah. you all over the place. That's amazing. 
I'm trying. I'm trying. So hey, dude, not, keep grinding. It, Your yeah, wife just, knows how to grind for years and make it. So like, dude, just let her tell you what to do, right? You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't tell her I said that though, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate you.